to see you here again. This is another video offered to you by the Custer Academy. And here I want to talk about some threats and opportunities. I have accumulated some examples related to threats and opportunities that you may encounter or things that may have happened in the past or things that can happen in the past. Let's first have a look at threats, different threats that have been occurring in the past, things that can occur again, and of course we have to learn lessons about it. First of all, we have what we call the disaster one, I call it Galloping Gertie. Galloping Gertie was in fact the Tacoma Narrows suspension bridge, and it was a bridge uh, crossing the river, the Tacoma Narrows in the US and it was destroyed in 1941. The bridge was a Golden Gate type suspension bridge and it was a very beautiful design, very nicely looking and basically what happened after the inauguration of the bridge, when the winds were blowing, the bridge started to move and that's why it got its nickname Galloping Gertie and people went to look at it as a kind of attraction but at one day the movements became so um, dangerous that they had to close the bridge and it continued until the bridge was destroyed it was in 1941 it's one of those very famous disasters luckily nobody was killed or hurt in that event only one dog which was in a car standing on the bridge basically was killed. Now the reason here is what we call flutter or aeroelasticity and the winds were blowing well below the design speeds nevertheless the frequency that was acting on the bridge was very close to the resonance frequency of the bridge and the resonance means that the amplitudes of the movement are in fact amplified like when we sit on a swing when we move the legs at the right moment or when we push a person at the right moment that repeating action will make the swing go farther and farther have a higher amplitude of course we know that but in certain cases like this structure it was in fact uh, very dangerous another uh, event that can happen is when soldiers march over a bridge the stepping frequency can also be close to the resonance frequency of the bridge there was an incident in the 19th century if i remember well or the 18th century in the uk where soldiers marching over a bridge basically destroyed the bridge only a few people were hurt but the phenomenon was there basically discovered when you would watch the movie bridge over the river kwai you see at the end that the soldiers are walking over the bridge they are not marching because the frequency of the marching step can destroy the structure basically these things we have to learn from them these are things that were overseen in the project risks that were not considered another important risk uh, risk event that happened was the the Havilland DH106 or the Comet it was at that time the best pressurized airplane in the world better than the Boeing 707 until unexplainable crashes were in fact leading to ground testing and basically what the engineers were doing they were simulating the flight situation the cycle where you have the internal pressure pushing on the fuselage of the airplane making it go making it expand and come closer again so the movement in fact the repetitive movement was in fact the reason why the comment disintegrated in flight there were in fact cracks starting from the window it's called metal fatigue and when you have been playing at school with a ruler you know you bend it for a while and after a certain time the ruler just breaks it's basically the same element that you have these are things that were discovered risk elements that later were included in the life cycle of the airplanes in the design and so on another disaster airport uh, 
Tenerife um, North, uh, there was a very important crash uh, in, I think, in the 1970s. Uh, basically, um, Transworld Airlines or American Airlines 747 was taxiing off the runway while a KLM 747 took off and hit the airplane. The misunderstanding here was the fact that for all movements for the airplanes on the ground, taking off landing, they were referred to as clearance. Now, the Dutch captain misunderstood the order. He, mis he understood clearance for takeoff. The first officer already complained about it, but the captain said, I'm the captain, we take off. Basically, the word clearance here was the reason for this crash, the reason for the misunderstanding. The procedures were changed and from that moment on, clearance was only used for takeoff and for landing. Basically, changing the procedures led to an improvement of the airport security. Another important disaster, although today it's considered like a masterpiece, is the Sydney Opera House. The Sydney Opera House, uh, basically a landmark today, but it's one of the most described cases of project management disasters. The risks that were encountered here was, first of all, that the design was made for those roofs, those sculptures, those shell forms of the roof during the design, during the uh, acceptance of the project, there was no solution how to make it. Basically, certain solutions had to be found on the moment itself, and it led to a lot of problems, high cost, very expensive square meter cost for the Opera House. Nevertheless, although it has been considered as one of the biggest failures, a lot of risk elements, a lot of problems occurred here, we cannot imagine Sydney without the Sydney Opera House. Another element well, no, well known in the US, the Alamo, never forget the Alamo. Uh, basically, some um, American separatists were fighting the uh, Mexican uh, army. They were waiting for support. When you don't get a support, basically, you cannot do your project. So, support Missing support is a very important threat for the people working on projects. The Alamo is a clear example of that. They didn't get the support. Nevertheless, today Texas is or uh, Texas is a part of the United States, and the people still refer to the Alamo. Never forget the Alamo. Another element, the Battle of the Bulge, it was the battle in the Ardennes, Bastogne, and ba basically what happened there is that the US Army was advancing and the German elite battle group Piper starts a surprise attack to go to Antwerp because Antwerp were in fact uh, uh, a pl was a place or is a place where uh, a lot of harbors uh, infrastructure was available armies need a lot of supply so what they want to do is to cut off the supply of the invading army at a certain moment there was bad weather so bad weather was here a big threat for the allied forces they were already um, let's say quite relaxed uh, they were clear viewing the uh, victory over the uh, german army the German army, they took the opportunity of the bad weather to attack and fight the Americans. Now, one of the elements is the word nuts. When Bastogne was encircled by the Germans, the German army offered a possible surrender to the army, American division in Bastogne and the commander sent out the message nuts. Since then Bastogne is also called as Nuts City. Opportunities and threats at the same time here. Opportunities for the German army to go uh, and attack. They had a threat. One of the threats was that they didn't have enough 
petrol uh, to uh, fuel the tanks. So there they had risks to take. For the Americans, the problem here was the bad weather. They didn't have any air support, no possibility of supplies. And of course, finally, the US Army could withstand the attacks and in fact, push the German army back. Another element of um, risks or threats when you are doing some uh, construction work or infrastructure work, when you do it, for example, in a certain area in Flanders, in Belgium and in France or in some other places, you may encounter places where battles have been fought during the wars. Uh, the most recent one of uh, Second World War and First World War. Well, in Bel Belgium, you still find a lot of ammunition, even dead soldiers, when you start digging in the grounds around the town of Ypres, uh, Flanders and so on. It's very important to take that as a threat. Consider it when you are doing some construction work in those areas. Very important element here is that today the people know and before starting to work on construction, the government is going to do typically some uh, excavation, some control. Uh, when I was doing um, the projects for the Belgian army in specific provinces, in certain areas, we always had some, some specifications about ammunitions and things like that, because there are a lot of that still in the ground, certainly in places where battles have been fought in the past. A very important threat that can happen sometimes is the discovery of archaeological important sites. Those archaeological important sites may be encountered when you don't expect it, you start digging, think about the um, army of the soldiers in China, you may find a lot of uh, architectural sites where there were old settlements and so on. Sometimes unexpected, uh, they were doing some work on the roads in Belgium, in Antwerpen. They knew they were going to find the old uh, walls of the town. Uh, some of them are still nicely preserved. They were just closed, but people knew that they were there. So you can take it into account. But in some cases, you may just end up on an old archaeological site and then you run into problems. Typically, when you encounter archaeological sites, you have to stop the construction or the work that you're doing, and it can lead to enormous delays and losses on the project site, which may also lead to bankruptcy of the companies. I had one company I was teaching uh, some years ago. They had a similar thing on a project in China. It was a very, very heavy burden for them. And it changed also the way they were looking into risk management. So that was it for the threats, what possible threats you can find. There are a lot of other threats and you have to consider them for every project. What are the threats that may be occurring? And you have to evaluate. And that's why we do a risk management process. But there are also opportunities and risk management is not only about threats in project management, but also about opportunities. We may find out something unexpected. Here is a picture of the first digital camera. You can imagine, you see on the picture, the tape on the left side on the top and at the same level of the lens. That's the recording and all the electronics. Can you imagine this is the first digital camera invented by Kodak. Unfortunately, Kodak was a company selling films. They're selling films and they wanted to sell films. And you know, when you have a digital camera, you don't need a film anymore. Kodak was also the first company to create a Kodak, a, a small box camera to be able to sell the films. They didn't make the camera to be a camera, they wanted to sell films to the people. The people need to have 
a camera to use the film and that's why they invented the first let's say uh, small cameras that everybody could buy now the company here said no we bury this we don't want to work with it and basically Kodak missed the market of the digital cameras today we don't see so much of Kodak. There is still some department now into scanning and some other things. I think they still make some films, classical films, but Kodak is not the, fil the company that it used to be. Remember when we talk about the Kodak moment, the Kodak moment was the moment people took a picture. Kodak's name is engraved in film history. Unfortunately, they missed this occasion. You also have an opportunity and you have to see the opportunity and take it. An opportunity which is a little bit older, it's what I call the Remagen Bridge. It was during the invasion by the US troops in Germany. They were fighting the German army and the River Rhine is a very important um, river. It's very difficult to cross. It's a um, wild river sometimes. It's very wide and you have to bring the soldiers to the other side, which is very risky. Now, the Remagen Bridge was blown up by the German army, but unfortunately it was not destroyed properly and soldiers could pass to the other side. Now, this opportunity was taken the moment the soldiers saw that the bridge was there, they could go to the other side, they could establish a bridgehead, and after that it was in fact a lot easier to cross the Rhine. It saved weeks from the war, and basically this is an opportunity that it was not planned, nobody was taking it into account, but suddenly the bridge was there. Of course the army tried to capture the bridges before they were destroyed, they didn't count on it because the German army was quite well organized and very good in destroying these bridges. But in this case, the bridge was still there and the first line soldiers crossed the bridge, although with limited means, but it gave the possibility to create a safer place for troops to pass the river. So basically here I wanted to share some threats and opportunities that happened in the past, of course, but it's also important to see that these are things that can happen in your projects today. You can have a problem with management support like in the Alamo. You may have problems with design like the Sydney Opera. You may have those archaeological sites. You may find some enhancements, some interesting features during your project and you can use them. Unfortunately, Kodak didn't use it, but on the Remagen Bridge, the US Army used this opportunity. You have to be open for opportunities and try to adjust your plan once the opportunity is there, because it can make the difference between success and failure. So that was this video. I'm thanking you to watching this video. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you and bye-bye.